Yeah. So before getting into the demo, like uh, let me give a brief intro about me. So I'm Sandeep PS from India. I'm working at EY as a senior software engineer. I'm part of this awesome community since 2023, and I'm currently focusing on SharePoint and Azure apps development and community contributions as well. So let me quickly jump into today's agenda. So I'll be starting with giving an intro to the employee directory and we'll be seeing the demonstration, live demonstration, and later I will move to the code walkthrough. So the sample which I'm going to demonstrate today is employee directory web part. Uh, this is actually part of the Refresh Ranger initiative, uh, which we had in the last year. So in that, we have updated around 43 samples to the latest version of SPFX 1.20, which was the latest version at that time. So that actually includes web parts and extension. So I got a chance to upgrade few sample and the uh, employee directory is one of them. So coming to the employee directory, uh, it is an web part where users can able to search employees with the newer tenant and can be incorporated to SharePoint sites and MS Teams channels. So behind the scenes, it actually uses the PNP search to retrieve user properties from the tenant. Means we don't need to use a graph API and give permissions from the admin. Ad admin center. So the upgrade process was actually straightforward uh, because the previous version was SPFX 1.17.3 and I have used the SPFX toolkit. Uh, it, it got the capability to upgrade the solution uh, which gives a step-by-step -step process uh, which we can follow and upgrade the solution. So let me move to the demo part. So uh, this is the actual uh, view of the directory. Uh, if I click on this in the edit view, uh, in the web property pane, I could able to see a few set of properties here, starting with the web part title, which we can add based on your requirement. And later we got the search on first name. So uh, based on first name or last name, you can search the people's name here. And nextly, we got the result layout. So by default, it will be sender. And if we toggle it to spaces between, it will add some space between the cards. And nextly, we have the properties to search. So whatever the properties you are going to search in the search box, you can uh, add it here. Uh, you can also add custom properties that are available in the user profile properties. So below to that, we got the pagination. So uh, where the least pagination is two and the maximum value is around 20. So uh, based on your requirement, you can adjust these values. So coming to the most interesting part of the solution is actually the live persona card. Uh, means if you hover on these cards, right? So you see these are uh, a nice Microsoft UX of live persona card. So this is actually uh, the same component we are rendering from the organization chart. For example, if we move into the out of the box solution, this is actually the out of the box, out of the box solution organization chart. And if I hover on this, I could see this same component getting loaded. So uh, for this solution, we are actually uh, loading this component using the SP component loader. So uh, I will showcase you like uh, in the code itself. So let me move to the coding part. So this is actually the root component where the where all the components getting loaded, starting with the web part title, search box, and pivots. Pivots are actually used for uh, rendering the alphabets. So you could able to see A, B, C, D, like uh, the alphabets to A to Z, and those are all mapping uh, from this pivot only. So let's see how the persona, live persona is getting loaded. So uh, when this persona card loads for the very first time, right? So at that time, uh, we are actually passing the live persona card component ID. So we pass this component ID to the SP component loader, and it returns the actual component. So which is actually set to the state and uh, below if you scroll down uh, like you could see the condition where we are checking the live persona card so if it exists then we returns i mean calls the live persona card otherwise we calls the persona basic persona card so let's see what we have in the live persona card so it actually returns the jsx element so we pass the live persona card itself and some other properties including service scope, legacy, UPN, and some callback functions. And we have the 
children uh, j6 element so uh, whenever we hover on these uh, basic persona card so at that time you could see the lay persona card getting i mean popped out so lastly we have these uh, as i mentioned like we are using the pnp search so uh, pnp search uh, method so we are uh, actually taking three parameters here the search string itself means the alphabet uh, for example in the initial load it is starting with the alphabet a and at that time it is returning some uh, users details right so it is using this search string and second parameter is actually the search query so whatever you are typing in the search box uh, it is collecting and passing to this uh, search users new function and finally is the is initial search so below to that we got the if condition uh, where we check is is whether the initial search is happening if it is the initial search and we construct the search query and we pass to the pnp search method and otherwise if it is not the initial search and we check for the search query and uh, we assign that search query to the query text and we send that query text to the search method now this function i mean this uh, solution is also available in your teams channel so you can also sync this app to the teams so that you can add this one to the teams channel so if i move into the teams channel so here i can see these uh, same experience that i am getting from this web part so uh, and also you got these uh, properties here so you can update these properties accordingly Yeah, so that's all about this uh, web part.